Hello lads, I've been spending my entire day in Photoshop and Word doing some supplement labels so I thought to take a much needed break and uh, fortunately for me and for you it has been a uh, release of the Vampire Coast DLC so I have been um, quite excited for this to be perfectly honest. I will admit that to myself and to you that I've been excited for a... Um, DLC to this very fine game. Now obviously I've been uh, talking highly of this game before and I will say so again. It's an absolute masterpiece and um, I thought to before we get into the actual campaign we're just gonna look through the um, the new factions. I've already decided upon uh, which faction to play but uh, we're gonna look through the, the Vampire Coast Mad Cunts first. The so Vampire Coast. The Luthor Harkon, first and foremost. Um, quite aesthetic um, weapon shield there, and uh, infamy and loyalty. Pirate Coves, gain infamy and leech wealth from unsuspecting settlement owners where these hideouts have been formed. Okay, so that's actually a quite cool thing, I suppose. That uh, could be nice. And uh, Count Noctilus. Epic name, if anything. Uh, the Dreadfleet. So I didn't actually play Dreadfleet, the board game, when it came out. But um, I know at least that it's from there. And Aranesa Salt Spite. Looks like a war dance or something. Um, not familiar with his character, actually. Um, but she, it looks like she doesn't like <laughs> my kind. She doesn't like Norsken tribes at all. Uh, income from raiding, plus 50%. Okay, so... Chance of finding treasure maps. Oh, right, I think this is something new as well in this DLC. So that might be a cool feature to, um, to check out. And then lastly we have... A, <laughs> a bulk bra woman, uh, some sort of um, Bretonian undead. Oh, I like that the um, the singing. So anyway, enough about that. The campaign I thought to start uh, is with Loki the Fellhart. Now, obviously, I was hoping for this. Um, DLC to have Molly's Dark Blade because you all know that I've read the books. It was quite some time since I read the books, so if I'd read it today, I might have um, not liked it as much because, in retrospect, he was quite he was quite gruesome in uh, in the books to say the least. But um, what I like with the books is at least that he, you know, is setting the pace high throughout the entire. Um, uh, book series and just keeps uh, pushing the pace and being an overall high testosterone, high thumos and high energy mad cunt. But uh, this guy obviously highly aesthetic as well and then uh, I like the dark elf, um, dark elves in the lore of uh, Warhammer. So uh, he starts with some black arc corsairs, absolute aesthetic. Units. I actually had quite a few of these models back in the day, but I sold my uh, Dark Elf army. Uh, Feral Manticore. Right, that sounds high testosterone also. Income from slave pens and slave markets. Okay, that's good, because then we can capture a lot of slaves and have them work in our, in our industries. And uh, upkeep reduction for Black Arc Corsairs. Absolutely great. So anyway, I've been uh, talking enough, I suppose. So we're just gonna... Legendary, we will not go with Legendary. That was the last... That was from the last campaign I played, which was with Crone Hellebron. Really nice uh, campaign. I played that during the summer, when I also needed much needed breaks from... Um, Designing things. So anyway, we're gonna go with very hard, which is my standard uh, difficulty settings for a total war Anyway, let's get on with it. Boom The world has seen countless murders 
But one killing stands above all others. One death that has shaped the world. Malekith, son of Enerion, was betrayed. The elven princes crowned Belshanar as the second Phoenix King. So Malekith brooded and poured his hate into a single cup. Malekith toasted Belshanar, then stepped over his dying body and into the sacred flame of kings. But the fires stripped his flesh, and with a final scream, he hurled himself back from whence he came. His body was taken north, and a suit of armor forged. Malekith was reborn. The Witch King, and in his shadow, legions raised. Decades of civil war followed. Then Malekith embarked on the most ruthless of plans. His sorcerers would unbind the magic of the Great Vortex. Created by Kalador Dragon Tamer and his elven mages, the Vortex siphons the winds of magic, keeping the demon tide at bay. Malekith's spell was flung at the Vortex. But Kalador himself broke through the mists of time to deflect the titanic force back at its casters. The Shadowlands were ravaged, sundered. Your Highness, you bring this witch here. She is well versed in law and prophecies. She will betray you, my son, as all have done. She is indebted to me. I have her soul. Step forward, Felician the Heartkeeper. The comet disrupts the vortex. Whilst it is weak, a prophecy can be fulfilled. Of a king who consumes the heart of Ulfwan. My son will take its power and our vengeance. Find the Oracle. She knows what to do. I am willing to serve to earn my soul's release. The Tower of Blessed Dread rests off the mangrove coast. But I will not linger here, for the jungles are ripe for the pillaging. In the north lies a mass of ancient ruins, holding untold treasures and secrets within. And beyond that is a greater prize, one the reptiles claim as the first city. It shall be mine. Yet Mathlan urges caution that far inland. The dwarves of these mountains hoard great wealth and shall be stubborn in relinquishing it. Further south lies an infestation of bubonic proportions, ready to corrupt any bounty we gain. These vermin must be driven from their nests. But first, these accursed reptiles draw my attention. They will bask in Sotex gaze no more, for I feel a frisson of excitement from my Corsairs. The Kraken Lord is on the hunt! Highly epic, if anything. So, um, 
yeah, I hope you enjoyed that uh, trailer if you haven't seen that before, the Dark Elf Malekith story. I think they are um, so well made in this game, the uh, intro um, story setting things as it were. And uh, obviously bonus to this mad cunt for saying, almost saying uh, bubonic plague level sickening. So yes, a uh, skaven presence of uh, bubonic plague level magnitude. Um, or something like that. Anyway, really epic place to be. Uh, I like the sense of being here in um, in the jungle on search for plunder. So, obviously first time I am playing this particular... Malekith has commanded all loyal subjects to deliver the vortex to him. And I shall be the one to gift him the power he desires. I... Lock here, Fellheart. I'm not content with my current renown. The completion of this task will earn me the respect and admiration of all, even the Witch King himself. A most uh, worthy cause to serve your king loyally and to seek the respect and admiration of your peers. Definitely a good message. So, uh... Capture and occupy a settlement belonging to the following faction, Sudden Sentinels. Alright, how about this one? Uh, might be a good idea. Perhaps we should actually... Perhaps recruit some units before we go on the offensive there. And, uh, yeah, that's... We see the upkeep is uh, definitely lowered there, so... Um... Aha, we're standing in enemy territory. I suppose that's why we can't recruit anything. So we're gonna go back and... Uh, yes, boom, boom, and... Uh, there we are, and then we can get at them. See if we can build something fun. No, we can't really. We can request additional slaves, though. Even though we haven't really... We don't have any slaves yet. We can also research some sort of... Okay, this is always good. Battle is business. Income from post-battle loot, plus 10%. Always a good idea. We're gonna check diplomacy. and see if we can... Do something fun here. Clan Spittle. Do you want to do you want to trade with me? No, do you want a non-aggression pact, maybe? Well, thank you. Court of Libaras. I know of you, Dark Elf. What do you want? Uh-huh, okay. Uh, I would want to trade with you, but you don't seem eager at all. So we're just gonna go with a non-aggression pact. Alright, let's take the turn and uh, then see what uh, the crack is. So, speaking of nothing at all, I have, uh, since I've gone off coffee, something I will elaborate on in a coming separate video, but I've gone off coffee, so I've started drinking tea every once in a while. Uh, not the same extent as I drank coffee before, but drinking some tea, and now I'm currently sipping on some orange rooibos and I must say that it's uh, it's rather delicious so if you happen to stumble upon orange rooibos you can definitely try it out all right let's see what um, what these guys Sacrifices to might do so they are recruiting at least and what can we do here? If we can place this there, boom, that's good. Because now we see this area can be used to uh, reinforce this um, this guy. So we're actually just going to um, try sacrifice them to Mathlan. 
Okay, that's good. And Mathlan is the sea god. I'm gonna go with a quick save in case I completely mess up. So here are the spells that are being uh, bestowed upon us via the, um, the Black Ark. So this should be a quite good uh, battle to um, do in this particular episode. All right, we're in the battle, and it's um, gonna start now. And um, we're just gonna charge down this unfortunate, um, but brave, I must admit, uh, lizard man. And then we can form up. And obviously, perhaps we should hurry up to this high ground, otherwise they can. No, actually, we can form a line here, since we have the missile advantage. I uh, would assume, at least, so then they can come to us. I think that's a reasonable course of action. And there's our feral manticore. Oh, and he is actually getting... He's getting wrecked by this Saurus Old Blood. Uh, dreaded Duelist. Okay, let's um, perhaps utilize that. And... Alright, let's um, disengage you. And uh, I miscalculated that. Just a bit. Um, now let's see. You can actually head into those lads immediately. And we can utilize this dreaded duelist thing. Boom, there we go. And there is the, uh, the Dread Arc uh, that is aiding us. And now we have Sky Cauldron can be placed there, I suppose. And now, obviously what I want to do is to get behind these units with my missile. And this was badly timed by me because now they have the high ground there. Thus gaining a, I think is uh, this way in this game as well, that they get a, uh, a bonus for um, being on the high ground. Okay, our feral manticore, he is, um, yeah, he's doing good work there. I must, uh, must definitely give him that and. Now, let us see. These guys, they have insulted Mathlan and need to be illuminated. I got a soul rain there. Aha, this... Uh, Ah, he has rallied. That's not good at all. That is not good in the least. I can, can tell you that much. Hopefully the dreaded duelist here can, um, can redeem this situation. Okay, so we have to um, restructure. Aha! So our our gallant lord is um, is currently running away. That's not um, it's not particularly what I wanted to um, see here, but uh, it is what it is, I suppose.
Oh, this is uh, this is rather embarrassing, getting beat in um, in this very opening sequence of uh, of this Let's Play campaign. How blasphemous! Okay, so Loki must do everything he can to survive, and we do have our Manticore bra, who can hopefully help Loki over there. And uh, okay, so we have these um, old bloods who are wreaking uh, chaos and mayhem in our troops. Two old bloods. Maybe we can shoot them so that they will run away. I don't know. Okay, epic. Our uh, gallant leader here has um, broken, is routed this, uh, these guys. Okay, it actually looks quite good. Boom, there we are. Absolutely an absolute relief. A Pyrrhic victory. So, uh, a good start after all. It looked quite bleak there for a moment, but um, fortunately, Lukir rallied and uh, could come back to bolster his troops. The Kraken Lord always wins. The Kraken Lord always wins. We must fill the slave decks. We must fill the slave decks. Actually, it's the only reasonable course of action. And now, the question remains if we can actually... Ah, perfect. Then we we'll just uh, do like that. And our Manticore just survived. That's uh, good to see. Loot and Occupy. Hmm. That sounds like a uh, reasonable course of action. The reptiles impede my search for scrolls, and in doing so, delay my tribute to Malekith. While the Witch King doesn't intimidate me as he does my other kin, I cannot afford his ire. The cold bloods are in my way, and so must be removed. Perfect. Corsair Conquest. Alright, then I will just uh, look through the uh, what kind of fun things this guy has on um, here. Okay, so it's basically the the regular things up until we get to um, to these sort of things. They look... Uh, Patriarch of the Fell Hearts. Epic. But we're gonna go with Rote Marcher as it is right now and... Uh, we can demolish this and build something fun, and then we can repair this and uh, I suppose upgrade uh, this one. Alright, that will have to be this episode, and if you have watched this far, comment. We must sacrifice. George Soros to Mathlan. Comment that below if you have watched this far. So anyway, have a glorious rest of your evening or day. XOXO, boom!